Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver. While most people may have heard of 10 watt or 20 watt diode lasers, you might be wondering about a 22 watt laser module. It's essentially the same as a 20 watt module, which combines four 5 watt modules by focusing them together and producing a more powerful laser output. Now, let's take a closer look at the features of the Falcon 2. Unlike generic open frame laser engravers that use standard aluminum extrusions to form the frame, the Falcon 2 has a customized frame that is more rigid, allowing the laser module to move at 25,000 millimeters per minute. The engraver also has a built-in air assist powered by the machine itself, eliminating the need for an additional air pump and nozzle on the laser module. The airflow can be adjusted using a knob located at the side of the machine. Although it doesn't come with a touch screen, the Falcon 2 supports offline engraving. When you press the frame button, the machine reads the latest file on the micro SD card and continuously displays a preview frame of your job so you can position the material accordingly. Once you're ready, just click the play button to start the job. Some of the safety features include an emergency stop button, a sensor to halt the machine if it tilts or drops, and a lock to prevent unauthorized use. There are also three LED light indicators on the laser module that monitor airflow, flame detection, and whether the lens of the laser module needs cleaning. Overall, the features of the Falcon 2 look promising. I would like to thank Creality for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. This machine is pre-assembled. The entire frame and the x-axis are put together in the package. Besides the frame, we have the 22 watt laser module, air assist pump, razor legs, the power supply, some tools, and some cables. We also have some 2mm plywood and other sample material. To begin, connect the air pump cable to the machine, which will draw power from the device and allow the air pump to be turned on and off using G-code. Connect the air tube and mount the laser module on the X-axis, securing it with two thumb screws on the side. Connect the other end of the air tube to the laser module and plug in the cable from the module into the left side of the X-axis connector. Wrap the air tube with the cable to avoid obstruction during machine travel. Next, set the vocal length using the three-level metal plate provided, which is based on the thickness of the material. Turn on the machine, home it, and ensure that the X and Y axis and all the limit switches are functioning correctly. Insert the micro SD card to run a sample job. While this machine does not feature a touchscreen, it supports offline engraving, and the latest file on the SD card will run automatically. Press the frame button to draw a preview frame of the job and align the material so that it fits inside the frame, which will continue drawing until the start button is pressed. Okay, it looks good, and I will now put on my laser tent with ducting that will exhaust the smoke outside. Press the play button to start the job. It uses scan mode to engrave and cut it out. and it looks all right, so it seems everything is working. I will now set up this machine in Lightburn. Creality comes with a machine profile, so just import it and you are all set. Let's run an engraving power test. As this machine claims the top speed for engraving is 25,000 millimeters per minute, I will start with its top speed. Then, I will slow it down to 20,000, followed by 15,000, and finally 10,000 millimeters per minute. As this is a 22 watt laser module, I don't think we need to test it even slower. But let's try one more at 7,500 millimeters per minute. Let's take a look at the result. At its top speeds of 25,000 and 20,000 millimeters per minute, the marks are a little bit too light. 
I think the usable range to get good results for engraving would be 15,000 millimeters per minute or slower. Next, we'll test the machine's cutting capabilities on a 2 millimeter plywood sheet. We'll test the power levels from 100% to 50% and the cutting speed from 1,000 millimeters per minute down to 500 millimeters per minute. The results are impressive, with the machine being able to cut at 900 millimeters per minute with the 100% power and any power from 50% or above when the speed is slowed down to 500 millimeters per minute. Moving on to 3 millimeter plywood. I will start by testing a speed ranging from 1000 down to 100 millimeters per minute without air assist. Surprisingly, the laser module can still cut through the wood with ease at 600 millimeters per minute and 100% power. Next, I'll repeat the same speed range but with air assist turned on. With the air assist, the laser can cut through the wood at 700 millimeters per minute with 100% power. The cuts with air assist are noticeably cleaner than those without. For the next test, I'll be performing vector engraving on a round disc and then cutting it out. For the first attempt, I will use a speed of 10,000 millimeters per minute and 80% power without air assist. Afterwards, I'll run the job again, but this time with air assist enabled. It's evident that the air pump and the air assist integrated laser module work very well together, as there's a noticeable difference between the two attempts. Then, I'll try to engrave a large photo on a 300 by 300 by 3 mm plywood using a speed of 10,000 mm per minute and 80% power, and then cut the photo out at 500 mm per minute and 100% power. While the quality of the cheap plywood purchased from Amazon is not very consistent, the overall result of the engraving is still satisfactory. Since this is a 22 watt laser module, it is likely that it would be chosen for its ability to cut through thicker wood. To test this, let's start with a quarter inch or approximately 6.35 mm thick poplar wood. I will start at a slow speed of 100 mm per minute and 100% power and I will increase the speed in increments of 50 millimeters per minute to determine the fastest speed at which the laser can cut through the wood cleanly. The wood can be cut cleanly up to a speed of 200 mm per minute, but at 250, it did not cut through completely and required manual separation. Let's move on to testing the machine's ability to cut through half inch or 12.7 mm thick poplar wood. I will start with a cutting speed of 75 mm per minute, then increase it to 100 mm per minute, and finally 125 mm per minute. Unfortunately, the final attempt did not cut through completely. Next, we'll try cutting a common wood board from Home Depot that I found in my garage. The thickness should be around 20 millimeters, which I will measure after making the cut. I will start at 50 millimeters per minute. The laser cuts through the wood like a sharp knife through steak. Then, I'll increase the speed to 75 mm per minute, and while it didn't cut through completely, it cut through more than 95% of the way. Cutting through this 19 mm wood in one pass is still fairly impressive. Lastly, I will test the machine's acrylic cutting capabilities. Since diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylic, I will use some leftover 3 mm black acrylic from a previous project. I will start at 100 mm per minute and 100% power. I will increase the speed by 50 mm per minute each time until I reach 500 mm per minute to determine the maximum cutting speed for this machine on 3 mm acrylic. The results show that it can cut through completely at speeds up to 250 mm per minute in a single pass. At a rate of 200 mm per minute, it can cleanly cut out a letter, including the small corners of the triangle inside the letter A. For those curious about the difference between a 22 watt and a 10 watt laser, I will provide a quick comparison between the Falcon 1 with the 10 watt laser and the Falcon 2 with the 22 watt laser. 
the Falcon 1 shares similarities with the standard open frame engravers commonly found in the market, as it requires assembly of four aluminum extrusions to form the frame, installation of belts, and cable management. Although an air assist pump can be added, it requires a separate power supply, which cannot be controlled to turn on and off using G-code. In terms of engraving power, the top speed of the 10 watt Falcon 1 is 10,000 mm per minute, whereas the Falcon 2 can reach 25,000 mm per minute. The actual usable range for the 10 watt module is around 5,000 to 7,500 mm per minute, while the 22 watt can engrave at 10,000 to 15,000 mm per minute, making it twice as fast. When it comes to cutting 2mm plywood, the 10 watt laser can cut at 500mm per minute, whereas the 22 watt can cut at 900mm per minute. For 3mm plywood, the 10 watt can cut at 300mm per minute, while the 22 watt can cut at 700mm per minute. For quarter inch or 6.35mm solid wood, the 10 watt can cut at 100mm per minute, whereas the 22 watt can cut at 200mm per minute. In the case of thicker wood, such as quarter inch or 12.7 mm solid wood, the 10 watt cannot cut through in a single pass, whereas the 22 watt can cut through almost quarter inch or 19 mm solid wood in one pass. The difference in vector and engraving is not significant, except that the 22 watt is able to engrave at twice the speed. As for photo engraving, the 22 watt is not only twice as fast, but the quality and detail are also significantly better. Finally, when it comes to acrylic cutting, the 10 watt can only cut at 100 mm per minute, while the 22 watt can cut at 250 mm per minute. All the tests were performed in a single pass, and while multiple passes could cut through thicker materials, the single pass results are more meaningful, as you can use these results as a reference. Okay. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver, starting with the pros. 1. The 22 watt laser module has strong cutting power and is capable of cutting 19 mm solid wood in a single pass. 2. The frame is pre-assembled, making it one of the easiest laser engravers to set up. With no need to adjust timing belt or tension, it's ready to use right out of the box. Three. The air assist pump is powered by the machine, and it's easy to control using G-code. You don't have to manually turn it on and off like with add-on pumps. 4. The offline engraving feature is intelligent, and just reads the newest file and draws a preview frame, allowing you to position the material and start the job with a single press of a button. 5. The frame is sturdy, which lets the machine operate at high speeds, such as 25,000 mm per minute. While it's perfect for engraving cardboard, it may need to be slowed down to 15,000 for wood engraving. Now, let's move on to the cons. 1. The motion system is still using rubber or POM wheels. Unlike a 3D printer, as the laser engraver can move at a higher speed, using steel wheels or linear rails would be much better. 2. The offline engraving feature is smart, but lacks a touchscreen. As a result, it can only read the latest file on the micro SD card. For products that need to be regularly produced, a touchscreen machine would be more convenient. 3. It operates with third party software such as the Free Laser Gerbil or Paid Lightburn. There is no standalone or cloud based software included with the machine, and it does not support Wi Fi, so the best way to use this machine is with a USB cable connected to your computer. Overall, the build quality of the Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver is excellent, with the built-in air assist pump and the strong cutting power of big standout features. It's one of the top three open frame laser engravers alongside the Xtool D1 Pro and Orter Laser Master 3, based on its price point. It's a better option than generic open frame engravers formed by four aluminum extrusions. If you're considering a high-end laser engraver, the Creality Falcon 2 is a great option to consider. The link to this machine is included in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and if you found this review useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. I will see you in the next video.